Um, a little bit about myself before. I, I come from a broken home um, where violence was very much the forefront. My dad was probably one of the top boys in the North 40 firm for our Stoke. Mm. He used to get a bit violent when he got home. Um, that dragged on up until I was seven and moved up to Bentley. When I got there, violence again was at the forefront because I was massively you know, bullied and because my big brother wasn't too popular. So I got grief from a lot of his, his mates and they allowed Lyle and stuff. And then from there, you know, drugs at a young age, uh, men with the wrong crowds. When I was 15, I was on heroin until I was 20, selling drugs, robbing from drug dealers, all that sort of, you know, mm. lifestyle that you can imagine. And then from that, I met, met my partner who I was with, settled down and settled for my own life. I was still doing, you know, the criminal stuff and thinking that I could balance the two. Mm. And that came to a massive, you know, halt. When I had a man phone me up and he gave me my children's date of births, their names, where they were, he told me who my missus was, he told me where I lived, and he told me he was going to kill me missus and kids. Right. And this man was very serious mm. through something that I'd done. So I was pretty panicky scared. Mm. In that, my next actions put me in prison because I went, you know, and intervened. Um, whilst in prison, um, I met a man named Simon Edwards. <laughs> longest Simon. I mean, there was, I was in with my brother and um, we had like a double pad, a big shared pad. And there's all these hardened criminals, let's say, you know, many people from Stoke. And we're all sitting there, and in Paul Simon. <laughs> we were all having the banter, you know, jail talk, talking about the female sc screws, you know, who'd you like the most? And yeah. All that jail yeah. Talk. <laughs> Simon walks in, blase, you can give your life to Christ. And that's pretty rude. Albeit, I love Simon, and I did then, you know, respected him for who he was, but, you know, don't come in my back and front of me, mate, and tell me how you can give me life to the God. All you got off and stuff. So that's mm -hmm. not for me. Mm -hmm. If you want to sit down like a man and have a brew, that's all I said. Yeah. And he, but you, you know, Simon, you can't show him on. Based off of that, you know, blessing was awesome. And yeah, so in that time of being in prison, I kind of changed anyway because sitting around a table with the people that you call your friends and who you think, and then all these young ones are coming in. And they're all bragging about what they've done, and, mm. and I've never been boastful in, in that. If I've done something, I've done it for a reason mm. in terms of biblical violence. And I'd never boast about it because I was never happy, you know, I've mm. got a conscience sort of thing. Mm. And I can hear these bragging about what they've done, aggravated burg on old, old, old people or whatever. And I kind of snapped at them. I said, listen, if I got a chance to apologise to my victim, I would. Yeah. So just don't come around my table giving it all this mm. like, like you know, like don't care about things you do. And then from there, I kind of moved on with this guy and he was teaching me to play chairs and all this stuff. When I got out of prison, I got out, sat down with this, you know, with, with this other lady, my partner going off with no man out in jail. Settled down after about 12 months with this girl. Got my life on track, I wasn't into any of the old stuff. And, um, and same happened again, she went off with another man, and I got kids with it. Can it? Mm -hmm. And went back to her from there, no, your default switch. Mm -hmm. And in that time, I, was, I mean, I got back massive into drugs again, I seed everything that you can think of. And I was walking through Anley this one day, I'd been on a three week bed there. Absolutely, I mean, the stuff, you could smell it all over me, it's coming out of me, sweat everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at a mess, but I wasn't bothered, because of everything. And it would bump into Simon. <laughs> middle around me and I couldn't even lift my head up to look at the guy and say I try and hug me I was like I don't know and it, I just broke crying I didn't know why because you know in me I was thought I was dead strong and I was happy with where I was going and, and he just kept trying to pray for me and I remember pushing him away saying no your prayers weren't weird mate and I walked off and he shouted his prayer like, as loud as he could <laughs> in the middle around me <laughs> pray to see you soon bro yeah <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I've gone on to your uncle. They've been Christians for as long as I can ever remember. And I've avoided them like play for, all, you know, I, I, I love them. Mm. But I don't go around their house because it just creeps me out, getting bread and water out and breaking bread and drinking or juicing, you know, <laughs> communion. What I now know, maybe it's just weird. So you come in your living room and do it. It's like, 
what you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I avoid them. And I did growing up. And this this one night, I kind of I got offered a job. I started dating people for money around this time, like drug dealers and stuff, mm -hmm. debt collecting. And I got offered a job, a serious job. It involved shooting somebody in the knees. And I took it stupidly. Didn't end up doing it, I might have. Um, but I took, took it, and it was all a ploy to get me in a particular place where mm. they could hurt me. Oh, no. oh. I was the, the job, yeah. so to speak. And in, in that time, I kind of backed away from anybody they knew because I got myself in something that I didn't want anybody else getting hurt because of me. Mm. So I put myself homeless on the street, and I was stopping in the new Silverdale's library doorway. Mm. And I mean, I've got a massive family. Most of my family were in Silverdale, mm -hmm. and I just didn't want anybody going here because of me. And I was staying in this doorway, and I was drinking st stupid amounts of alcohol. I mean, I think I was doing around eight liters of alcohol a day. It was really damaging. When I eventually got checked, my liver was at 19% function, and a lot of other stuff was shutting down. And in, in that doorway, I'd been sectioned as well for, for mm -hmm. having voices in my head. And, you know, the, the diagnosed me as. Um, psychosis and all this other, other stuff, mm -hmm. you know, what the world tells you you are. And then, in, in this doorway, I didn't notice because of the drink that the voices in my head had now become one voice. And this voice was saying, your auntie can help you. And I knew it was. So, and I don't know why I did, but I did. I went to Christine's. Knock on her door. She takes me. And it was a Saturday. She says, do you know we go to church tomorrow, don't you? And looks at her, drinking it up. It's a bit. And this voice in my head says, Ask her to go to church. So now I'm arguing with my own thought. Like, are you, you know, are you mad? <laughs> and then I'm thinking, I need to go back to Arkham's because I'm now having full scale conversation with my own thought process. Mm. But I was also scared of the night for whatever reason. I said, to one year old man, because of this mm. stuff and probably a lot of drugs and that. I was scared of the night, so I wouldn't be able to sit in here with the lights on with all them blinds open because for me at that point, I'd be like, who's out? You know, yeah. you can't see out. I'm sitting there, and the next day, there was Christy and my Uncle John, this lady from their church came, Reese, um, this guy Stuart, and now I'm surrounded by, by a little army, you know, all <laughs> ministering. But the stuff that I'd been asking myself in the doorway wasn't like a cry to the Lord, because I never put, you know, God, but He is your cries anyway. And I'm saying to myself, is this what I'm always meant to be? Somebody that hurts people, drugs, mm. destroy my families every time, you know, every relationship I ever had, I destroyed it because I just didn't know how to use the pieces of, you know, mm. how to how to get through life. And then um, my Uncle John comes walking through. Me and Gower Jamie, who actually comes this year, says, Me and Gower Jamie is making out here, this voice in my head, Simon Edwards, and I just knew he's and I'm thinking, I'm going to walk off in a minute. And he passed me the phone, he said, it's for you. And all he had on the phone is, bro, <coughs> You know, I'm Simon yeah. Edwards. And I just broke crying. Next yeah. thing, he turns up, thinking, how was this guy? I met him in jail. Yeah. He, he was alive there. No, my auntie and uncle, it's just uncanny, you know, how, how the jigs <laughs> slots together. And he come in. I'm not going to use his words, but because he was quite blunt, maybe. <laughs> you know, he says, your life's wrong. <laughs> Are you ready to give it to Jesus? And I just broke and I just said, what do I have to do? And they led me in prayer. Nice. And that feeling, I mean, I felt so heavy. I mean, so heavy. You struggle to pick yourself up most days. And that feeling, I mean, also I was doing was touching these fingers of another person. But it felt like I was getting hugged. So, so you know, yeah. even before I finished mm -hmm. prayer, I couldn't get that prayer out. It was such a struggle, like something was choking me. And once I finished the prayer, it was just, I felt so free. And because of that freedom, I broke, went down, me, went down on my knees, and it was Simon. He says, the Lord don't want you down there, bro. Get up. And I got up, and I just remember giving him a cuddle. And from then, that's where my testimony starts. Um, scripture says God places the lonely in families. Mm -hmm. And I was blessed with a Jamaican family that mm -hmm. took me in. As much as Simon and everybody else, mm -hmm. but they took me in, mm -hmm. and I'm still with them today. Yeah. It's more for me, sister Chanel. Uh, Simon and the guys took me in, walking, still walking with me, you know what I mean? And then from that, three days after being saved, I didn't know no terminology. And all I got told was, if anybody tries out here, just say yes. 
And this guy, I've never met him before, African man, he says, John, come with me for the day. I says, yeah, no problem. He takes me to Carrie's Bible College mm -hmm. and Cecil Paxton was teaching. And then there I got blessed under the Holy Ghost and this guy speaking in tongues, I'm thinking, nuts. Watch too much Harry Potter. You know what I mean? That's what I thought. It's because they're three days, three days old. Anyway, from there, ten months later, I met Anthony's wedding. Then mm -hmm. I met him. And I bumped into the principal of the college. And she says, Why don't you come fill an application for me? I'd never even had an interview with me on I can yeah. never mind come do forums. Mm -hmm. And I was so nervous. And she just says, Tell me about your life. So I did. And she stopped me for three, four minutes. She says, We won't give you the place. And that's <laughs> that's something that got done for me. Yeah. Three year courses around about twelve to eighteen thousand pounds and it's been paid yeah. in full. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, that's you know, I could go on forever. But the <laughs> love of God is just all over us. Yeah. You know, yeah. sometimes we forget, we don't yeah. notice. Yeah. I've received healing from lung diseases, <coughs> two of them, both of them killers. Yeah. And I've got it on medical paper to mm. say, You had it, you haven't. Yeah. I've got the scars on my back, I've had the operations. Mm. You know, I mean, Danny visited me in hospital as a mess on her, <laughs> tubes hanging out beside me. Right there, no, wait, yeah. But, you know, stand on what, what you know. Yeah. At first, I was looking at the cross from the wrong side. I was seeking healing. And whilst in hospital, God spoke to me and said, In seeking healing, you're missing the person who's going to heal you. Lovely. Mm -hmm. so Wonderful. From that point on, mm -hmm. I'm seeking the Lord and everything that yeah. I do. And I'm thankful. And I thank Him for you guys. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic.